What's up everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about factoring complex difference of squares. So it's a continuation of difference of squares, but these are a little bit more complex. And if you didn't watch the videos beforehand on difference of squares, I highly recommend you do because there's lots of carryover. So if you remember from previous videos, I was giving expressions like this, for example where this is a difference of squares because the square root of this whole expression is 2x plus 3 and the square root of this expression is 7. But sometimes you need to take a preliminary step in order to get it into this format. So notice that this here is a factored perfect square trinomial. So notice if we look at number 1, we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus y squared. Notice it's tough to do this by grouping. We could take out an x from these two, but we can't really take out anything from these two. So what I like to call this is three by one factoring. Meaning that what we first have to do is we have to factor these three expressions. Notice that x squared plus 8x plus 16, if we do decomposition on this, so find two numbers that multiply to 16 times 1 and add up to 8, etc, etc, we would end up with x plus 4 squared. And then this minus y squared would still be there. That's why I call it 3 by 1 factoring. We took these three expressions, factored them first, and then this one expression is still remaining here. And now notice that this is in this format. So these two expressions are exactly the same. If we were to expand this, we would get x squared plus 8x plus 16. So it's like we have to do two steps of factoring. So we first have to factor the trinomial into this, x plus 4 squared minus y squared, and then notice that this here is a difference of squares. And this here takes the format of a bunch of questions that we did in the previous video. So what we would do, this is like a squared minus b squared. So the square root of this whole expression is just x plus 4. And then we would subtract the square root of that expression, which is just y and then it would be x plus 4 plus y, right? So this is like a squared minus b squared, and this is like a minus b, a plus b, all right? Where the a is this x plus 4, and then the b is the y, all right? And that's the answer right there. You can't factor any further. So the final answer here for this one is x plus 4 minus y and then x plus 4 plus y. Now one more thing I want to note. Notice that this sign here x plus 4 x plus 4 didn't change. Only the sign in between the two expressions changes because this whole thing here is like a squared. So x plus 4 is like the a value. The y value is b. So it's never this that changes. That expression always stays the same. It's always the sign in between the expressions that changes. So just be careful. Sometimes I'll see students, they'll be changing this sign here in that expression. But it's always the sign in between the two expressions that changes. Right? So let's do number two, erase all this here, we got y squared minus x squared minus 8x minus 16. Notice that this one is very similar to this one, but it's almost like the expressions have been changed. So instead of the y squared being at the end now, the y squared is at the beginning. And then we have that same trinomial here. But the trinomial has different signs. But what we can do here is we can actually factor out a negative 
from all three of these. So we'd be left with x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then you factor this like we did in number one. That's a perfect square trinomial, so you would end up with x plus 4 squared. So in number one, I called it 3 by 1 factoring. Well, this now is 1 by 3 factoring. Okay, so it's when that trinomial is at the end instead of at the beginning. And you usually have to factor out a negative first because remember, for it to be a difference of squares, there has to be a negative there. So you gotta factor out the negative from all three of these and then all the signs change and you end up with that. And then it factors into that. And now this is one by three factor. All right, so a lot going on here. Uh, you'll probably have to do just a bunch of questions in order to get the hang of this and in order to start recognizing which type of factoring to use a lot quicker because so far with all the examples we've done, as you could see, there's just tons of different scenarios you could run into. But nevertheless, this is uh, the a squared minus b squared. So you would have a minus b which is x plus four. Now this x plus four, you gotta make sure you put in brackets here. Before, in number one, we didn't put it in brackets because it was the first term. But now you're gonna be subtracting that whole term, so you're gonna end up distributing that negative inside the bracket. The brackets, in this case, in one by three factoring are really key. And then you'll have one plus x plus four. Right, so this here was like a squared minus b squared, a squared minus b squared, and this is like a minus b, a plus b. Right, and then here, this negative, you gotta distribute in the bracket. So you have y minus x minus four. And this is just a positive one, so you could get rid of the bracket. So it's y plus x plus four, like that. So that there is your final answer. So notice it's different than this one. But nevertheless, if you were to take this answer, you could actually test this and FOIL everything out, three um, terms by three terms, you would end up getting this after you simplify everything, simplify all of the like terms. Okay, what about number three? We got 4x squared minus 49y squared plus 12x plus nine. So notice here that we can't really do factoring by grouping. You can't take anything out of these two. And then from these two, you could take out a three, but then the brackets won't be the same. You can't take out anything initially. There's no common factor in all four terms. And then notice that you can't really do, as it's given, any uh, perfect square trinomial factoring, any three by one factoring, one by three factoring, right? These three don't factor to a perfect square trinomial, and then these three don't uh, factor to a perfect square trinomial. But what you can do is you can rearrange it. So notice that four x squared plus 12 x plus nine that there is a trinomial. And then this we could put at the end like that, All right? So now this turns into three by one factoring because this here, that's a perfect square trinomial. If we end up factoring that, you would end up with two X plus three squared minus 49 Y squared. And then from there it becomes the same thing. We got a squared minus b squared. What's the square root of this whole expression? Well, it's just 2x plus 3. Basically that exponent will go away. And here we would have minus 7y. Then we'd have 2x plus 3 plus 7y. The square root of that is uh, 7y. 7y times 7y gives us 49y squared. Right, so a squared minus b squared, a minus b, a plus b. 
And that there is your final answer. Notice we can't factor that any further. So we got 2x plus 3 minus 7y, and then 2x plus 3 plus 7y. And then finally, number four, we got this expression here. Now, just as a heads up, before I had 9 written here, minus 9x squared, I changed it to minus 81. I realized that the 9 is actually not going to work. So writing this up here, we're going to have 16 minus 81 x squared plus 36 x y minus 4 y squared. So how are we going to factor this over here? Well, notice that factoring by grouping is going to be tough because taking common stuff out of here, then taking common stuff out of here, the remaining brackets won't be the same. We could try to maybe rearrange it, but we can also recognize that this looks like it could be potentially factored, these three terms here. So what we could do is we could factor out a negative from all these, and we'd be left with 81x squared minus 36xy plus 4y squared, right? So now notice that we have 1 by 3 factoring, right? It's tough to notice these sometimes. I already knew beforehand what was happening. But uh, again, you're just going to have to practice more and more, try to run into as many different situations as you can, and then noticing this stuff is going to be a lot more automatic. So this here, if you actually factor it, it factors into 9x minus 2y squared. And then notice this is a difference of squares. And if you want to actually do this, so we've got 81x squared minus 36xy plus 4y squared. Basically, 81 times 4 gives us 324. Two numbers that uh, multiply to 324 and add up to negative 36 is negative 18 and negative 18. So we would decompose this to negative 18xy minus 18xy plus 4y squared, All right? So notice from these two, we could take out a 9x and we'd be left with 9x minus 2y. And from here, from these two, we could take out a uh, 2y and we'd be left with 9x minus 2y as well. Then we could take out this bracket, 9x minus 2y. All right, so that there is how it works. A little bit more uh, complex of a trinomial to factor because of the x and y that's there. But same thing goes. You got to multiply the a and the c and find two numbers that multiply to that number and add up to the b value of negative 36. And negative 18, negative 18 work. And when you do this, you end up getting the same brackets, which is just 9x minus 2y squared. Okay, so from here, it's just a difference of square. So we got a minus b, or a squared, rather, minus b squared. What's the square root of 16? It's 4. Square root of this whole expression is just 9x minus 2y. And then this is 4 plus 9x minus 2y, like that. And then remember, when we did uh, number two, the one by three factoring, I told you that keeping that second expression in brackets is critical because you got to distribute that negative here. So we got four minus nine X plus two I. Then we got four plus nine X minus two I. So this here ends up being four minus nine X plus 2i, and this ends up being 4 plus 9x minus 2i. Boom, that is the final answer. So this here was uh, 3 by 1, 
factoring, the trinomial was at the beginning. This was 1 by 3. Factoring, the trinomial was at the end. Here we had to rearrange this, but the trinomial was at the beginning, so it was 3 by 1 factoring. And then this one here, the trinomial was at the end, so it was 1 by 3 factoring. So whenever you're doing questions in your textbook or a review or whatever, and you see them in this kind of format, this is the method you're going to be using to factor.